Hello and welcome to We Women Want. This is our weekly show where we discuss women's issues, we celebrate the winners and also we try and find solutions for those in need us. In fact, this is fast becoming a support group because we discuss all issues ranging from health issues, from domestic violence, from uh, fashion sense, from uh, fitness fads. I mean, everything is discussed over here. Uh, but today we're going to be discussing something that is uh, I think uh, most women go through it is uh, relationships at the workplace, the peer pressure that women feel uh, during the workplace and also what happens uh, when working women when they come home because they are, they are the ones who really have to juggle the work life balance. The um, some, uh, some I think uh, pressures are obvious, but there are also the unsubtle gaslighting the you know something that are not said, but you can see from a gesture, what all they have to deal with the harassment both verbal and unspoken is something we're going to be talking on the show today. Day. Joining me on the show is Dr. Vimal. She is a psychologist and someone uh, to whom a lot of people I think come and uh, she's dealt with a lot of issues. She's got some very practical solutions and she knows what is going on. Uh, we have Payal Chavla. She is um, uh, an advocate who runs um, an all women law firm, uh, Just Contract Us, that deals in commercial law. But Payal is also an expert on gender issues. She's recently invited by the World Bank to talk on gender issues also. Uh, we also have have uh, with us Dr. Farah Kidwai. She is uh, was a former Joint Secretary with the DRDO. She specializes in recruitment, personality assessment, and organizational behavior. And uh, she was also one of the selected for the Indian Air Force in the first batch of women officers and recommended for the Commonwealth Award. So um, today on the show, uh, Dr. Mill, I'll begin with you first, you know, in terms of, um, we're talking about harassment at the workplace. So how, um, in terms of what co would constitute, I mean, the obvious ones we all know, the touching and all that, but there is a lot that is not uh, said, but is felt. Uh, so th what are the issues that women deal with? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's begin with defining what we talk about, what we are referring to when we talk about harassment or even bullying mm. at the workplace. I think it's anything uh, which is intentional, any act or some, an, an act could be also words where there is a, it's like a ceremonious degradation of uh, the other person's character. So it results in character assassination. It takes away a sense of self and um, very often it leaves a moral injury. Um, so anything to that effect, mm -hmm. any behavior that culminates into a moral injury, character assassination or makes the human being feel lesser than themselves, I think is harassment. Would you agree with that? Just let's just go into the definition more or less, since so, you are the right person uh, for definitions. By uh, uh, no, I agree with Vimal what she's uh, what she has said. But uh, if I can, you know, as a lawyer, if I can just put it into a couple of buckets. Hmm. So um, the way I look at harassment, the first bucket would be uh, what I call aggravated sexual harassment, which would be uh, rape or uh, groping or uh, assault. The second bucket would be uh, simpliciter uh, sexual harassment, which would be sexually colored remarks or uh, uh, stalking, staring, gestures, innuendos. Hmm. Uh, the third bucket would be a little bit more complicated, what we uh, call in legal terms the quid pro quo. In uh, English, what that really means is you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Mm -hmm. And it could be um, asking for sexual favors for uh, increments or to rise in an organization or it could be a retaliation for not giving in to the demands of uh, sexual harassment. And the very last bucket could be uh, just discrimination of women. This could be pregnancy discrimination, it could be young motherhood discrimination, it could be just discrimination because of biases that one has which are inherent. Would you agree with uh, what the others have said or would you like to add? No, I do agree with what both of them have said, but uh, Payal has gone to a little uh, ex extreme form of harassment which uh, women face. Other than there are certain other aspects which we do not focus on. Spreading rumors, character assassination, um, questioning their competency as a act of using their femininity. Means 
uh, belittling their competency and giving it a name of like, oh, just being a woman, she is able to get the favors. And in a very minor thing, I would like to narrate one example also here. Mm. Uh, one government organization, whenever guests used to come, there was a tradition of uh, uh, um, presenting bouquets. Right. And uh, every time it was a g beautiful looking girl who was to present it. So it once happened with me also and I put my foot down. I said, why, sh why me? Hmm. So the statement they made was, Are sundar ladki jab phool degi to guest ko zyada achcha lagega. So I said, am I here because I am a beautiful woman or am I here because of my technical competence? And I, these are the things that happens and they belittle you. Just seeing a person as a woman, why woman? Yeah? She is an officer, she is a colleague, she is a human being. Why should we have to differentiate at every step? You are a woman, so this work suits you. That's, you know, I, yeah. that's a very good example actually. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, and also what uh, Farah said about uh, because you're a woman, so you know, uh, you get away, the whole assumption is you will get away with this or being a woman, you cannot handle th this pressure or, you know, or little things that office meetings, you're the woman, so you play mama and yeah, for the tea. <coughs> also, the religious uh, discrimination happens at a very subtle level. Like, you know, supposing there is, um, I've, I've spoken to people where the head is either um, let's say Sikh or Muslim and you know they would only want their own um, their, their, their li likes mm. in the team which also uh, you know I mean it amounts to discrimination but it happens in uh. a subtle way and it's it's hard to address yeah that's a, yeah I agree but that's another yeah. thing but you know just keeping the focus on the gender issue um, but it now could also are you be seeing a changing women, right? Women, okay. Yeah. yeah. But are you seeing Gender a little bias. bit of change happening? Uh, because we've, this is an issue we've been grappling with a long time. Mm. Women have broken glass, glass ceilings. Both. I think that there is a change happening in terms of it coming to awareness. Um, you may be getting more cases. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I think there is also an explosion which is happening at a ground level where they're coming up with new ways of harassment. Yes. Such as? interesting yeah like, like subtle s subtle ways you know it could be gender it could be sexuality it could be the color of skin yes. but it goes into the subtler nuances the way one speaks mm. or doesn't how many connections one has so I mean it wouldn't like if we say harassment maybe it doesn't fall into harassment but I feel that discrimination is or it or does amount to a certain amount of bullying so I think what Vimal is saying is systemic, the sort of underlying uh, systemic discrimination which on the surface may not uh, fit definitions of discrimination but they're sort of subtle like you won't be invited for meetings or you'll be transferred or mm. it wouldn't, you know, yeah. it, it wouldn't be overt. I think that's what women yes. are saying. See, many a times you are able to get justice when it is an extreme and obvious harassment. But these small subtle things, they create a lot of, uh, you can say frustration in a woman. These are irritants and they, when they build up, these irritants when they build up, okay, every day you are being seen on a gender line only, then there are chances of breakdown more because that is getting accumulated, that frustration is getting accumulated in a woman. And then one fine day, either she bursts out on others or uh, she withdraws or sulk or completely or go in uh, depression. So these are the things which are, I think are more painful. But as far as the change you are talking about, yes, a lot of change has been taking place. Uh, the gender sensitivity is coming up because now organizations are focusing hmm. on this thing. Now, both the, if I talk about the armed forces, entry of women started in 92. Hmm. And it took 30 years for a woman to win a case and become a CEO of an organization. Her leadership competency to be accepted by the organization itself. So see, it took 30 years. The flip side is this, but come what may, they have proved their mettle and they have reached that level. 
because so many reasons have been given for no, they being ineffective as a leader. So many causes have come up which I do not really agree to except for one reason that yes uh, physically or you can biologically they have a one limitation and if they go on borders and if suppose they are caught uh, by the enemies the exploitation will be more there. Mm. But other than that exploitation is within the organization also and in the society also yeah. police is coping with that. So, still the lot, lot of difficulty in accepting and mm. lot has to happen to accept them as equal. Mm. While you run an all women law firm, how does that work? You worked in uh, other places where there are men also, so what is the difference? Uh, the difference is massive and I can tell you that uh, all women, as an all women organization, what this experiment that I had done works brilliantly. It is a safe space for women. Uh, they feel comfortable, apart from the comfort of, of having an all women organization, uh, I can speak for uh, a law firm because uh, unlike other organizations, we have literally, uh, women are, have to uh, be at three workplaces. One, the first one is the domestic workplace, which all women have to cope with. In law, you have uh, your organization, your office space, and then there's the third uh, workplace, which is a court setting or a negotiation setting, where uh, if you're a, uh, you know, a, a corporate lawyer in that sense, not a litigator. Mm. So uh, I believe that our work organization, which is a place within my control, I can uh, nurture women uh, in a space where they don't have to deal with men in the in that organization so you're not gra there's no file grabbing there's nothing about uh, men have being able to stay longer while women have to leave because uh, of the obvious safety concerns so they can uh, work and they can learn at their own pace and then be ready to face the external environment that i can't control i can't say that now you know you will only you will have right. women on the opposing side or only women judges you will face right. So I think uh, it works brilliantly and uh, I can tell you that despite uh, being an organization that may not be paying at par with some of the top organizations, we've had very little attrition. Do you think that, uh, how would that work out in terms of, do you support such a thing or you think uh, uh, it's um, better to get gender sensitization done or it's good to uh, prepare women in their own environment? And she says like file grabbing and the other you know issues uh, that come in when there is. Yeah, the, I I do I think it's an amazing thing that you're doing because I you know like Pyle said she's doing she started off as an experiment, and I think that in the world in especially in our culture, we um, we need to have space safer spaces for women, and I think this is also in a way empowering them, um, and. See, again, they, because it's a codependent thing, mm. like there is the all women's firm and then there are others where, so it's a mixed bag, it's fine. But if we were to only have that, maybe that would be a problem. May I just clarify yeah. one thing? Mm. Uh, uh, having all women businesses is not the answer in the long run because yes. segregation and we know this historically yeah. we know it from data that it's not going to be economically efficient finally Correct. but it, just in the interregnum till, till you have uh, more equitable workspaces uh, this might be one of the avenues to look at as a platform to prepare, prepare nurture. Yeah. nurture is the right mm -hmm. word you use pile actually so um, you know, we spoke about some of the issues that women have to deal with, but uh, what about women helping other women? Do you find that happening or is it just, uh, or they, there is a competition because there is a very small slot still for women at the top, so everybody is rushing for that. I think for that the panel has already Doing <laughs> started <it>. working <laughs> it because when all Good women answer. are working and the organization is working so well, so that answers the questions, ke, question that, uh, okay, it's not. This insecurity comes where in a male dominated organization yeah. where there are fewer women hmm. working there. Now there everybody is trying to and it's not vis a vis with the women, it is with the men because there are certain double standards in our organization. Uh, men think that women in the office should be working with them twenty four 
seven. Mm -hmm. The way because men like to spend more time in the organization. They like to work extra hours, stay longer without realizing that woman has other duties, domestic duties also to take care. And the double standards that I have noticed is when uh, at home when your child is sick, mm. the husband expects wife to take a leave and look after the child mm. or if the maid is not there or if the guests are coming, Correct. so the wife should take uh, leave and stay back. Mm. But in office, when a woman colleague takes a leave for the same reasons, then she is called unprofessional. Same husband, when in office, he expects his wife uh, to take leave and her, his colleague to not to take leave. Mm. Why these double standards? Secondly, I again say, everybody is, uh, these days social networking plays a lot of role in uh, professions for success for getting promoted. Mm. When men does it, it is acceptable. But if woman is little friendly also, leave aside psychophancy, if mm. she is little friendly in her approach, then uh, she is using her femininity, she is taking favors in the name of gender. So why these all things which woman has to face on day to day basis. Yeah. Yeah, they are implicit and you know, they are not something that she can even call out, but these are the exactly. issues that she is dealing with. I am going to take a break and come back and keep this conversation going, so stay with us. Hello and welcome back to We Women Want. We are here discussing women in the workplace, but I just want to, you know, since you all are here and we are also, this is the aftermath of the horrific uh, rape and murder in the car. I know you all wondering where I am headed, but you know, uh, we, uh, just your initial reactions to, you know, we've had Nirbhaya, we've had this, we have cases every now and then. But uh, Pai, I'll begin with you first. What uh, should, uh, the law is the answer or is um, uh, harsh punishment, the harsher punishment the answer? Or is implementation of the punishment the answer? All of the above, <laughs> but uh, I think the most important and the critical element which we are losing sight of before I come to the others is uh, catching children young, I agree. Uh, uh, training them for boys uh, to make them understand the difference between an act of sex and intimacy versus an act of violence. So, so for boys, it's very critical. For girls, I think we just have to bring our girls up more differently now. They should be able to affirmatively uh, be taught about consent, that you have agency. Mm. You no longer need to be coy. You have to be able to say yes when you want intimacy and not maybe, and no is a no. And then, of course, we have, we have actually, I, I do want to say we have, uh, the laws are all in place, implementation certainly. Uh, I'm not for harsher punishment than already exists on the books because that can have uh, connotations which we do not want in society. Yeah. Yeah. No, I liked uh, what Payal said about uh, communication. It's from both sides. The girl also sometimes when she wants, but she cannot say, she feels that she's too forward. She says yes, so she says maybe. Which is why the boy, when she's saying no things, it's maybe he and no nahi hai. So boys should understand and girls should perhaps be more bolder in their, what they want or clearer in what they want. Yes, I do agree to that. But I also think that, you know, the workplace, since we're talking about the yeah. workplace and relevant to the hospital case as well, um, there are certain structural boundaries need to be in place as well. For example, separate changing rooms, separate bathrooms, and I think that is a that is um, the organization's way of lending itself to promoting the boundary setting so that there is safety. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, we speak about gender equality, but equality also comes from respecting the needs of each gender. It's not always about just placing them on the same platform. Hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. I think the structural, uh, you know, uh, point that she put uh, in systems in place within the workplace also. That's an important point. That is there because I've been addressing uh, in one of the public sector organization, hmm. and the major issue that came up there was ladies wanted a separate washroom for them. 
Mm. There was not. And that no. No. And for there years wasn't. they have been asking for it. They should have it. Oh. Why do they have to ask for certain things? And somewhere this sensitivity has to mean. If we say that the workplace, this sensitivity should come up. No, I think it has to come from the families at itself. Because if you want to bring a change in the organi in the society, and then at the workplace, the families should teach their children this gender sensitivity. The habit of mothers or of the family treating boys differently and girls differently should change. They should be taught to coexist and respect each other, vis a vis their gender, hmm. their needs their challenges that they face for both of them it is important because it has a very um, a reaction a strong reaction also because when women is or the girl child is suppressed in the family she became a rebel and then when she gets a time and she gets little bit of freedom they get, go overboard to prove themselves that they have this right and in the process they end up hurting themselves. So there is a need to bring a balance in understanding, in perception, in the attitude of the children and the parenting style needs a change. There. But also in the workplace, uh, Payal, there are, you know, men say that why do, I mean we had that whole debate about period leave for instance. So you know, there are also uh, issues that rankle the men perhaps that the women have it easier. Yeah, and I think that does need to become more equitable. For example, you have maternity leave for women. There should be compulsory paternity leave for men. Right. Because you look after the child uh, for three months and then it should become the responsibility of the men to uh, forcibly take leave and look after the child for uh, another couple of months. So then it becomes equitable. And I just, in this context, I know we'll be deviating slightly, but I do want to mention this. Uh, those that have been following the abortion debate in America, mm. just think about it, or talking about uh, the right to life, but not a single debate talks about where men want the child, they will take care of the, the child. The men are completely absent from this debate, so I completely agree with you, it does need to become equitable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, the men's point of view is also something. Yeah. To, uh, because it's but not there are certain some countries who mm. have that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, for example, in Germany, they, they do have six months of paternity leave where the fathers also. It has to be involved. mandated yeah. because this debate has to stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, you are trying to make it equitable by giving them a paternity leave mm -hmm. to look after the child for three months. It will be a punishment for them. <laughs> because <laughs> men does not want to spend time at yeah. home and contribute in these exactly. things, child rearing thing yeah. or any household. But they grudge the woman the maternity leave. No, yeah. so yeah. till the time yeah. it is not given, they will grudge it. Yeah. The day you will make it, because in government organization, mm. they are given paternity leave. Yeah. It's there. But how many of them really avail it? And for what they avail it, it should be something like this. If a man has got a paternity leave, at that time, mother should not get a maternity leave. Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, what happened? Mother, as it is, is doing the response, taking up the responsibility of child rearing, mm. and man is sitting at home and enjoying that paternity leave. <laughs> So, no, I I think, but yeah. there's also uh, an issue um, in terms of recruitment. You know, uh, men uh, officers perhaps ah. prefer a certain age because they they all always ask, "Are you married?" Matlab yeah. ke now what? You know, children. You know, they they always worried that she'll uh, get married, then she'll be disappearing for honeymoon, then disappearing for child. So they, that's also held against the woman, but I not the man. Uh, po post COVID, do you? I mean, now Work I don't think it's up. an issue. No, no I mean. Uh, at least in my organization, uh, work from home has worked brilliantly. Uh, I, I don't think it's an issue in today's day and age. It and I think certainly an yeah. issue. But in fear, yeah. and if uh, in armed forces, I've seen in various other organizations, they do look up to certain things. One is first question that they ask: When are you tr uh, planning to get married? That means. Yeah. yeah. Mm. When will you go on leave? <laughs> are you planning a family? Why such questions are asked from a woman? Now, if in armed forces, 
there should be an equal uh, opportunity given to male and female at the same time to get selected. You will not believe it, since 2007 or 8, I have been struggling in the organization that boys and girls should be uh, selected or should be tested at the same time, in the same batch. Parameters almost same, slightly physical uh, relaxation is there given to women, but they are treated separately. Boys batch will come separately, girls batch will come separately to the extent that in dining hall, girls will have a separate table, boys will have a separate table and staying aspect is almost, almost matlab, very means they cannot intermingle. Hmm. Now, why both of them are not treated in same batch? Because if in for an NDA or for a CDS entry, if woman is also applying and the boys and the same parameters are to be and same yardstick uh, is to be hmm. tested, then why are they not uh, tested together? The ex reasons that I have been getting, getting since 2008 is, no, how can boys and girls can do a uh, group task or a field job that in which they are tested in a group testing technique, how can they be treated together? Because they have to touch each other, they have to lift each other. If they cannot do it here, how will they do it on the job? How will you train them to work together? And uh, it's an interesting thing. Which is, but okay. the last answer that I got will amuse all of you people, because till that time they were away. It's hmm. uh, very of the misconduct, but the last statement which made me really happy was one senior officer told me, no, if boys and girls will uh, compete together, then all the seats will go to girls. Ah. They will do better. <laughs> that is also that fair. The list will get affected. <laughs> I was so happy with that, Manika. <laughs> if you accept this, then I take Your back my exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Last word from you on this, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what can be done really? Um, <clears throat> what, one of the things that we haven't spoken about is the the, the role of the personality coming into uh, the you know make some personalities I think are more susceptible to picking up the harassment because if you you know if you kind of look at the people who are harassed and who have undergone bullying are usually the milder personality types um, the aggressive ones or the assertive ones they're harder to hmm. target so they're not targeted as much. Um, so what I would like to conclude with is that if there is, it's easiest to nip it in the bud. If there's a doubt around it, if there is, if you spot somebody um, talking about you or building a group against you and you feel it from more than one person, that's the point to kind of notice it and do whatever in the context you know, whatever is relevant in the context to be able to be done because the larger it grows then it just grows and studies show that about 74 percent of people who are harassed within about from 6 to 12 months are usually force resigned it leads to so or or they yeah. quit or, or you know they're yeah, terminated yeah. so yeah so it is a very real issue that you know it one is, is dealing issue. with whether one yeah. calls it out or one internalizes it but this is something i think we should have on the table with more discussions like this but thank you so much all of you for joining me today and that's yeah. it for now For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.